Hi everyone and welcome back to my sixth 21 wildlife walks. Today I'm here in a field in Gloucestershire and I'm actually going to be dedicating this walk to the curdew, which is a species which definitely needs our help. I'm very, very pleased to be joined by a few special guests on today's walk, which are going to tell us all about the curdew and their conservation. After looking at and learning about the curlew's breeding habitat, the day began with attempting to track down some GPS tag curlew chicks. I joined WWT Research Officer Dan, who carries out lots of field work on the curlew. So we've just been walking around and we've now found the tag, which is, we've got it here. And I just wonder what that might suggest. Yes, yeah, so we've managed to recover this tag uh, in the meadow. and. Well, I could suggest one or two things really. Um, either the tag has just naturally fallen off like they're designed to do. So these are just stuck to the down on um, chick's back. So it could have naturally fallen off and the chick's still still out there somewhere on the meadow. Or it could have been predated and uh, yeah, the predator has, has ripped this off while predating the chick. Uh, what does a sort of tagging do then? What is sort of the aim with the tagging of the chicks? Uh, so it allows us to monitor the chicks basically once they've left the nest bowl. Um, in massive meadows like this they can be really hard to keep track of and monitor uh, and as soon as the adults alarm the chicks burrow down into the grass making them pretty difficult to find. Yeah. So yeah this means we can we can pinpoint where they are. Makes so it a lot easier. Oh yeah absolutely yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so we've seen some adult curlews at this site but now we're moving on to another site to try and hopefully see some curlew chicks. Unfortunately we weren't in luck to see any chicks as it was quite late in the season but it was great to see plenty of adults. So now I'm joined by Mike Smart who is uh, a curlew expert and field worker who spends most of his time helping out with curlew conservation and field work. So thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Uh, so I just wanted to talk to you a bit more about curlews in the Avon and Severn Vales. So how are they doing here? Well, they're um, not too badly. Um, as you can see, we're alongside the River Avon. Um, which is in the background, the River Severn's a bit further over, um, and they nest uh, in these uh, green fields on either side of the river, mm. which tend to be flooded in winter, but are hay meadows in summer. And so um, they uh, nest on the ground, mm. um, and as long as the hay cut is taken late enough, mm -hmm. They can, they've got time to take their mm. young, get their young off, uh, hatch the eggs, raise the, raise the young, and then um, they'll be here just for the summer and move off uh, to spend the winter around mm. the coastline. And there's been a population in sites like this and on, in other river valleys in Lowland England um, for many years now. They're, they seem to stay, the population seems to stay fairly stable. Uh, the problem is that they're not very successful mm. at raising chicks mm. and that obviously means that numbers mm. are going to drop in the long run. So why is that? Why are they not being successful? Well, um, one, one problem, the, the big problem is mm. habitat. They yeah. used to be much more widespread. Mm -hmm. Uh, with intensification of farming, um, with more arable crops, with um, lots of fields that uh, that used to be hay meadows, but now they cut silage early on. The curlews have a, a very long um, hatching period. It takes them over a month to hatch their eggs and another month for the young to be able to fly, uh, which and since they nest in April that takes you into late June early July um, and most farmers want to cut their hay before then so it's only in these low-lying fields mm. that are quite damp that that they managed to survive. Mm. 
Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I thank you for all you do for Care News. Pleasure. So I'm now joined with Mary Colwell, who's a well-known author, campaigner, and founder of Curlew Action. Hi, Mary. Hi, Maya. So would you be able to tell us maybe a little bit more about the Curlew? So the Curlew is Britain, Europe's largest wading bird. And I like to describe it about the size of a duck, but it's got those long legs and that fantastic yes. long with down mm -hmm. curving bill. And when it opens that bill, it produces that beautiful, bubbling, haunting, mm -hmm. vocative call, which just says spring is here. Um, and also a whole variety of calls, actually. And we might hear them and they're all flying Hopefully. around us at the moment. They were here a minute ago, so <laughs> <laughs> whereabouts can you find curlews? In the winter, you'll find them on the coast. Our curlews and lots come into here from Europe. So that's the most likely place. Mm -hmm. And they kind of flock together and, and mooch about. Uh, if you want the evocative curlew, go and find them in the spring. Mm -hmm. Go and find them in, I mean, we're standing in a meadow in Gloucestershire uh, and they're breeding in these meadows. Uh, not very many of them, but they are in the south. Um, guaranteed go to the uplands, the upland chain, and you'll probably see them right the way through the uplands in the springtime. How are they doing in the UK? Well, it's a really sad story. They are falling off a cliff, really. Uh, we've lost around about, uh, well, you know, 99% crash in Southern Ireland, 90% crash in Northern, uh, same in Wales. Uh -huh. So, you know, the, uh, in Southern England, you know, 60, 50% decline. So we're looking at um, a massive decline and the reasons are big and complex and knotty mm -hmm. and difficult. Mm -hmm. They're how we farm the land, they're the large numbers of predators we have in this country. To do with development, to do with climate change, to do with forestry. So many you conservation name it, issues. If it's t if it's conflict ridden, yeah. curlews will find themselves in the middle of it. Brilliant. <laughs> I know you're the founder of Curlew Action. So what does that organisation do? Uh, Curlew Action is about awareness raising. Yeah. It's about telling people what's happening to these birds and why it's important to care about them. Uh, if you don't know, you don't love, do you? And if you don't love, you're not going to look after mm -hmm. them. So uh, Curlew Action is founded on awareness raising, spreading the word, mm -hmm. forming networks, getting people together. It's also about education, mm -hmm. because unless we're educated in, in nature and we understand mm -hmm. what things are and how they're interrelated, uh, it's very difficult to make the right decisions. So Curlew Action is all about awareness raising and education. No, brilliant, it does some brilliant work and thank you very much for having me today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Show me around. I know you said how surprising it was to see them on the coast in, in the wild winter. No, it's been great just to walk around the fields and you know see them on their breeding grounds because I'm so used to seeing them yeah. on the coast in estuaries and areas like that. So it's just been, you know, brilliant yeah. to see them where they're breeding. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. lovely. It's a very it's a great it's a great summer experience. Isn't it is it? definitely. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, Maya. So sadly, that's the end of my walk today here in Gloucestershire, talking all about the iconic curlew. I'd really recommend giving Curlew Action a look because they do some amazing work to save this iconic species. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you can, please donate to my Just Giving page where I'm trying to raise £2,100 for the BTO. The BTO, of course, does research into curlew. Uh, so if you can, please donate. Thanks for watching.